Hello and welcome to Agony. I'm Patricia Mitchell and joining me in the studio are our resident advisors, ready as always to give advice on anything and everything. Welcome to Agony Aunt and Therapist, Kate Lloyd-Richardson, and also to Andrew Marshall, who's an author and counsellor. What are you doing? Are we on camera? Doing? You're on! <laughs> I was just Hello. thinking the please out of her hair, sorry. Oh, well, you just carry on doing that and we'll move on to our problems. Julie from London has written to us with this dilemma. She and her boyfriend, Alan, have been together for a while now. But like any man with some time on his hands, Alan likes to fantasise. As a result, Julie feels a little uncomfortable with Alan's excessive energy. No, that's what I call a welcome home. Yeah, well, I've missed you. Me too. What, have you been up to, anything? Nothing. Well, I wouldn't mind getting up to something right now. Oh, Alan, wait. Why? I can't wait. Oh, just a minute till we're inside. <sighs> Come on, Jules, don't be such a prude. Being a prude, Alan. It's just that there's a time and a place for everything. <laughs> oh, come on, Jules. You're not in the office now. You don't have to run to schedule. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Lovely evening, isn't it? Who are you talking to? Mr McGann from up the road. He doesn't look very impressed. Yeah? So what? Geezer's eight years old. I'm not expecting him to be interested. It's not like he's a young, fit, gagging for it 24 hours a day geezer like I am, is it, eh? I know that, Alan. But he doesn't want this rammed down his throat in the middle of the street. <laughs> Jules, come on. When we're inside. <sighs> Come on, Julie. You don't really want to do gardening all day, do you? Someone's got to. Oh, come on. I need more attention than the roses do. All right, go inside. I'll be in in five minutes. I'm not going anywhere. Alan, not in the mm. garden. Mm. Well, what do you suggest, then? We go to bed? <gasps> well, yeah, that sounds more sensible. <coughs> oh, yeah, but who cares about sense? Well, anyone could see us. What, and you don't find that exciting? No, Alan, I don't. I think sex is a private thing between me and you. Not something we do for the general public. Oh, my God. You are so dull. No, Alan, I'm just normal. I just think that sex should be done in the bedroom, not in the middle of the supermarket. Went straight to John. He was laying on the floor. Are you watching John this? John said he'd, um... Done me. No, not really. <laughs> Look, you might as well turn the telly back on. <coughs> I'm not in a mood. Not in the mood? You've been in the mood for months. You just don't understand, do you? I really don't know what your problem is. Are you just boring by nature? You haven't wanted to be near me for ages. Only because we've been outside where anyone could see us. But we're inside now. Yeah. Well, now it's my turn to be not in the mood. <coughs> You're not being fair. Oh, what's fair got to do with anything? Sex is supposed to be about fun and passion and frank caution to the wind. Not something you do for exactly half an hour when you're tucked up in bed at nine o'clock with a cup of hot chocolate. <laughs> You're being stupid now. Yeah? Well, I'd rather be stupid than boring and a prude. Alan, I love you. Oh, yeah. That's all very well to say, isn't it? But actions speak louder than words. You even get embarrassed when I want to kiss and cuddle in the street. So I'm getting boring in my old age, am I? Look, I'm older than you are, and I'm still up for it all the time. You should be gagging for it even more than I am. Alan, is this all because you're worried about getting older? Oi! <laughs> Oi! Oh, I'm not arguing anymore. I'm going to bed. Oh, I'll come soon. Yeah, well, don't hurry on my account. I'll be asleep. Oh, he's having a bit of a strop, isn't he? Julie just doesn't know what to do. While she wants to enjoy a healthy sex life with Alan, 
she says that she's starting to feel very uncomfortable. Now, Andrew, what advice would you give Julie? I think uh, it's going to be totally and utterly out of character, but Julie, I'm going to say, get rid of this man before he ends you, lands you up in court, because you know, his idea of a good time is the sort of thing that will actually get you into, uh, into the tabloid newspapers and get you into big trouble, and I think you should get rid of him. There has to be a balance, though, doesn't there? Do you think she's the one that should be compromising a little bit, or do you think that's a slippery slope in this You instance? can't compromise with somebody who wants to have sex in the great outdoors. You're either indoors or outdoors, there's no compromise. Andrew, you're looking very sort of. I don't know why wasn't he about a, this one. Why wasn't he a preacher or a teacher or something? Who you, Andrew? I mean, yes, not the boy on the video. Well, we can talk about Andrew's problems later on, but what about what about our well, Julie and Alan? There is a legal problem. It is actually indecent exposure, which I didn't realise until a solicitor pointed it out to me quite recently. Sexual intercourse in a public place well, I won't can ask be you prosecuted. But if you do it when there's no one around, it doesn't matter. And I think that Andrew's being very dull, thinking that the bed is just for sleeping, you know, just for having straight sex in and sleeping. But he does seem to be, I have to say, he does seem to be going for it. It's like at every single given opportunity, mm. like when she's doing the gardening, although her pose might be considered a tad provocative. Let's have a look at this clip. You don't really want to do gardening all day, do you? Someone's got to. Oh, come on. I need more attention than the roses do. All right, go inside. I'll be in in five minutes. I'm not going anywhere. Alan, not in the mm. garden. Well, what do you suggest, then? We go to bed? <gasps> well, yeah, that sounds more sensible. <coughs> yeah, but who cares about sense? One could see us. What, and you don't find that exciting? No, Alan, I don't. I think sex is a private thing between me and you, not something we do for the general public. Oh, my God. You are so dull. That is so true. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> being told when you are trying to say I don't want to have sex here that you are dull I mean, but she is dull Patricia I mean if it's good enough for Lady Chatterley all that great outdoors and in the potting shed and the shrubs it's good enough yeah, for her but the and beds are there to be ill in and to sleep in I do you know what it's not so and to be it's, strapped down to and taken off to a mental so institution in your case hang on don't talk over me Andrew if you don't mind you can talk over her but not me mm -hmm. what about the th this whole thing okay it is the outdoors but it's obviously <laughs> a thing that she she just doesn't want to do is there is that should she just stay quite defiant on it or no. is there a way that that she can communicate to Alan that maybe she needs to take it in stages the problem is that when you say no to somebody and they keep on coming back that is called manipulation that she, he is not hearing her when she says no and that is a very dangerous that's kind deafness. of that's a very dangerous kind of relationship to be in I think that this is a man who is bad for you Julie oh why do you think that you've got but, it against him but Kate you're saying I mean and I think Andrew's got a point you know that you're saying about the Lady Chatterley thing but and 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 there's sort of things I think and you know DH Lawrence where they make it seem that sort of having sex in the outside is is, is wonderful but it is there is there is a I have to say I think there is a slight perversion in it Why? because uh, well I don't know I mean Why? I, what's the problem here th there are healthy perversions it's just that that whole question of <coughs> where does it stop and and is one allowed to say no like Andrew's saying Julie wants to say well, no of course and you've Alan's got to say no wherever it. haven't you but I think that this young man Alan it actually wants sex he's not into making love he wants sex and part of the excitement for him is that frisson that he might get caught by somebody but that's not fair because that's that's I not think that fair doesn't come Julie. into it you've heard him say that Julie to, to, to do something she doesn't want to in order that he's satisfied well I think she needs to let go a little Andrew have they got a future no because not only does he not get his own way but he also sucks and behaves like like a five-year-old, get that boy oh. out of your life. Try well, that the shop doorway late at night. Oh. When, but please, no, please no, advise the from your solicitor before you do Just that. Do that. Gosh, yeah. heated debate here. Hopefully, that's been of some use to anyone in a similar situation. And if you'd like to write to us with a problem that's been bothering you, then just drop us a line to Agony. P.O. Box 7290, London, E14, 5DD. And I will repeat that address at the end of the show. We can't guarantee personal replies to your letters, but we can promise to feature your problem in a future episode of Agony. Welcome back to Agony. Our resident advisors, Kate Lloyd-Richardson and Andrew Marshall, are still here in the studio and are ready and waiting to solve more of your problems. They can't solve their own, but they're trying to help yours. <laughs> Denise from Wooden Bassett has written to us with this dilemma. It seems her husband, Joe, is just a little too interested in their son's sex life. 
So, Danny boy, what time did you get in last night? About three. <laughs> More like five. Who's the lucky girl, then? Joe. What? He obviously wasn't out till five in the morning for nothing. Look, if you must know, her name's Tracy and she works down the local supermarket. And, uh, she's a bit of a goer, is she? Oh, Joe, stop it. You're embarrassing him. No, I'm not. I'm a son. Well, I don't think it's appropriate to talk about this at the breakfast table. I only want to know if he got his end away, that's all. Dad! Oh, that's enough, Joe. I'm sure what Danny gets up to when he's out with his mates is his own business. I just want to make sure he's being careful, that's all. I know what girls are like these days. Can't get enough of it, eh, son? Don't worry, we're taking precautions. Yeah, well, just make sure you do. We don't want to hear the patter of tiny feet in nine months, do we? <laughs> no chance. Anyway, we haven't really got that far yet. Haven't got that far? What's the matter with you? Can't get it up. All oh, right, that's it. No more of this talk at the table. Danny, you get off to school, otherwise you'll be late. What's the matter with you, Joe? Can't you see he doesn't want to talk about his private life? I'm only winding him up. Well, can't you wind him up about something else? Why does it always have to be his sex life? And just what is the matter with you? Does it upset you to hear about your son doing what comes naturally? Where's Joe tonight? I said he had a hot date. <laughs> so long as I don't have to hear about it tomorrow. What is your problem with that, really? I simply don't think it's right to discuss our son's sex life. It's just a part of his natural development, like, I don't know, playing football or acne. It's slightly different. I just want to make sure he's turning out all man, that's all. I should say, that's his third hot date in as many days. Yeah, that's my boy. So, is he still seeing that girl, uh, Tracy? Yeah. Seems like they're getting quite serious. Well, as serious as you can when you're 18. <laughs> I wonder what they get up to together. What? Well, he did say they hadn't, you know, gone all the way. It's none of our business. I'm just interested, that's all. Mm. Night, love. Do you know what I fancy? Oh, I can imagine. I thought we might try something new. Like what? I don't know. Different position or something. OK. What do you suggest? Well, Danny was telling me what him and Tracy get up to. Pardon? I was just saying Danny was telling me what him and Tracy get up to. And I thought, well, we might try it. Come on, love. Something new might be just what we need. Look, I don't mind trying something new in the bedroom. I just don't think it's right that you keep talking to Danny about sex. Oh, don't be such a prude. I'm not being a prude, Joe. He's our son. Yeah, but I like hearing about what other people do in bed. It really turns me off. Just promise me you won't talk to our son about it. Look, you worry too much. It's, it's just a father and son thing. I do feel very sorry for Denise. What should she do? It's got to the point where Joe actually seems to be getting aroused by Danny's activities. Mm. Denise asks, is Joe perverted or is she just being a little bit too sensitive? Kate, woman to woman well, to woman, what I tell do you, you think? I tell you, I think we want to start praying for Denise because he is just such a pervert, that husband of hers. I know she can't tell that when she married him, but no man should have that sort of unhealthy interest in his son's sex life. Part of the thing of being a father is letting them go. Behind closed doors, they do their own thing. Do oh, you it's think disgusting. I, I, I'm, Sorry, it's my, getting me, yeah, it's my, no, get my blood the hairs on my back Denise, rise or whatever you horrible. call it. But it's Have that whole... Exactly. No, back? I haven't, and as I said it, I knew you'd pick up on it, and yeah. I thought, not a good thing to say, but I said it by then. <laughs> but what worries me is that do you think it could be that Dad is trying to relive his youth? What do you think, Andrew? Unfortunately, men often try and compete with their sons. They try and beat them at football, ping pong, and unfortunately, this father has taken it one step too oh, far. It's horrible, isn't it? I mean, it is disgusting, but 
I think we've got to we've got to say it's disgusting and see how we can help. But the, the, the other thing is as well that he is being disgusting with his wife. At least he's not going off and having affairs. Exactly. But the thing that the bit yeah. in the video letter that really just turned my stomach, I have to say, was was this particular bit. And we'll take we'll take a look at it and then we'll have a chat about it. Let's have a look. Do you know what I fancy? Well, I can imagine. I thought we might try something new. Like what? I don't know. Different position or something. OK. What do you suggest? Well, Danny was telling me what him and Tracy get up to. Pardon? I was just saying, Danny was telling me what him and Tracy get up to. And I thought, well, we might try it. Come on, love. Something new might be just what we need. Look, I don't mind trying something new in the bedroom. I just don't think it's right that you keep talking to Danny about sex. Oh, you're such a prude. I'm not being a prude, Joe. He's our son. Oh, dear, we don't like that at all. Uh -uh. You know what? Because I actually tried to put myself in Denise's shoes or sheets or whatever in that situation. I thought, God, you'd be actually, you'd be thinking about your son having Yeah, well, even sex that's unnatural, it's, it's you just see. not... You see, Patricia, one of the most unnatural things to think about is either your parents doing it or your children doing it. This is why, you know, although you could tell them the facts of life, you know, just a few facts about it, like, you know, people have it off or whatever, that's enough. Because to actually envisage them in the act of legs around the back is too much. So how do we move on? How I, do um, we move on? I think that what we need to do is we need to distract hubby. And I think that if he wants to talk dirty and hear all sorts of dirty goings on, I think you should buy one of 0, those... 0800-4939-27. No, 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 no. I think that you find that they have adult sort you of... You made that number up, didn't you, Katie? Yes, you of to, course. You ought to add that. You made that number, number up. But, no, but that they have these sort of adult spicy books now that you can read sort of erotic novels. Mother and, Jeffrey and all that. And I, th I think that you should actually start reading some, some naughty bits at bedtime to him. So he's actually got something... somebody. Else's oh, God, that's disgusting. Too. I can't believe you said but that. That's surely so disgusting. Kate, it's all relative, and that's better. And it a is quite a good novels. ploy. And oh, it moves, it's not. It's disgusting. It moves away. You know what the problem is? That he's living in the country. That's the problem. He lives in Woolly Wooden or wherever. So what's the future? What do you Get do? into the city where there's plenty to do. Get your mind off all this muck thinking about your son's sex life. Get out of that country thing. They're no good. People in the country always oh, odd. All right. She's oh, never oh, written a rant and a rave today. Always odd. She, RK, to... <laughs> Calm down, dear. Well, if you're a celebrity with a dilemma, do not fear, because our agony counsellors may be able to help you too. When a man gets to a certain age, he really feels it's time to bring an heir into the world. Apparently, celebrities find this true too. Aging rocker Bill Wyman is set for fatherhood again. And while some 60-year-olds would care at the thought, the cheeky star is merely relieved he's not shooting blanks yet. With three children already in tow, Bill is hot on the tails of his Rolling Stones partner in crime, Mick Jagger. 53-year-old Mick and his celebrity wife, Jerry Hall, are expecting their fourth child in December. Sprightly Bill married Suzanne four years ago, and despite their 22-year age gap, the couple couldn't be happier. But isn't the star taking on a little too much? Admittedly, parenthood can be a joy at any age. Years pass by and Dad gets older. Can the satisfaction last? Well, they look they look pretty happy to me. What do it's you disgusting. think, Andrew? Well, I think actually the it's idea disgusting. of older fathers is a very good idea because at his age he's got plenty of time, he's got experience, and I think he'll make a very good dad. So I think, in the words of the Rolling Stones, he should say to his critics, get off my clouds. I can't what do you think, Kate? Because he's got the money to oh, look after. Oh, Patricia, I don't care anymore. I just can't put up with these stupid cliches like get off my cloud and Rolling Stones gather no moss. It's ridiculous, Andrew. You What's know far too well that old men should stop doing that sort of monkey business before the age of 40, and that's just because you're coming up to your 40th and you don't want to think of not doing it anymore. It's disgusting. In fact, it's so Surely. disgusting. So disgusting. And I haven't got an arm, and I just haven't had an calm, arm for 200 episodes. Calm down. I'm okay. not, I'm calm not down. going to calm down. No, I'm not going to calm down. I've Look, just had it up to here with just you. sizzle down, woman. We're, no. we're, coming, we're coming now to the, uh, to the end of the programme, so I just want to know, what do you think about Bill Wyman, then? I think he's past his sell-by date. 
like Andrew G. Marshall, and he'd be much better off sitting at home with a bit of Mantovani than just playing these ridiculously outdated rock records and trying to have sons. In fact, I think that's where I shall go now and listen to some Mantovani. Patricia, it's nothing to do with you. It's him. I can't stand these cliches, and I'll have my tissue. And another thing, I haven't had an arm here for over 200 episodes, and I'm not going to sit on a chair without an arm for any longer. So until there's an arm there, I am out of here. Thank you, and goodbye. Well, hey. um, that is the um, end of the programme. I'm, I'm really sorry. That's it for this edition of, of Agony, quite literally. And, and if you've got a problem that you think we might be able to help you with, drop us a line to Agony. PO Box 7290 London E 14 5 DD. And for now, well, goodbye. But why? Please don't. <gasps> is it love? Agony. 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 Agony.